Which do you think is a superior platform for smart contracts? Bitcoin with sidechains like Rootstock, Ethereum, or one of the self-proclaimed 3G or third generation uh, blockchains? I mean, the problem is you can't really compare these things. Uh, and the reason you can't compare them is because one exists and the other two are mostly um, roadmap or test software at the moment. So Ethereum exists, and you can like it, you can hate it, but you can actually express an opinion as to how good it is for smart contracts and what kind of problems it has and how those problems are being addressed by the developers and community in Ethereum. I think they've done um, okay so far. Some big mistakes, some great successes, and the platform is gradually and slowly maturing. Um, rootstock, I'm interested in seeing how that goes. Until you have drive chains, rootstock is a more centralized, federated model. Um, it would have to bootstrap some kind of uh, consensus algorithm that's a bit more decentralized, and it's still in the very early stages of testing. So promising, interesting, different, but not yet. And the third generation. Uh, blockchains um, are suffering from the fact that most of them are not able to differentiate sufficiently with the first generation blockchains uh, or second generation blockchains. And so they're babies with big ambitions. Um, when they grow up, we'll see uh, and judge according to scale. Do it at scale first. If you if you're not doing it at scale, you can't draw any conclusions. So first, you have to put a very big pot of money on the table and say, "Hey, I'm going to secure this with a smart contract. Let's see what happens." And sometimes, what happens is millions of dollars get stolen or locked into a contract accidentally. But that's how you learn. Um, that's how you find those bugs. So right now, the superior platform for smart contracts is really uh, the only platform that's kind of doing smart contracts at scale, which is Ethereum. Um, and whether it's superior or not, that's a whole other discussion. What makes Ethereum interesting to you? What would you say to someone who thinks it's nothing more than an educational example of how not to do smart contracts? Um, so when I say Ethereum, I think I'm speaking a bit more broadly than uh, the ETH token and blockchain. Um, I'm talking more about a um, uh, virtual machine-based Turing complete programmable blockchain that allows you to run smart contracts, which would encompass things like Classic, Rootstock, and possibly Lisk and a few others. <clears throat> I find them all interesting. I think the idea of a general purpose programmable blockchain where you can run uh, programs as uh, I hate the term smart contracts, honestly, but where you can run programs that are triggered by transactions and track the state. It's a difficult idea to execute on. It's going to take a long time to mature the security. Um, along the line, there are going to be a lot of mistakes and missteps and burnt money and crashes and security vulnerabilities. But I think in the long run, something useful can emerge from that. Um, there are some scaling issues, there are some security issues, but I think we'll see the maturity getting to the point where you can do interesting things. Interesting things that take the security flexibility trade-off that Bitcoin has made slightly into the flexibility side, um, with, with still being able to maintain enough security to do some very interesting things that you cannot do. Um, with with Bitcoin, there are things that you can't do with with Bitcoin, um, and they're you know doing those securely is very very difficult, um, and we've seen that again and again with Ethereum. So Ethereum can't do what Bitcoin does, and I, I've talked about these trade offs before, and in fact, no Turing complete virtual machine based blockchain can do what Bitcoin does. Having a script language that is very simple and not Turing complete and uh, very robust, I think, is a very important differentiator. And it has certain very useful applications. So I find Ethereum interesting also as a platform for testing 
um, software engineering in the blockchain space on a much, much more rapid basis than Bitcoin. Bitcoin, because of its nature as a robust reserve currency and very, very secure decentralized payment platform, um, <clears throat> has to be conservative. And as a result, it has to move slowly and it can take risks. Like there is no way that we could do proof of stake as an experiment on Bitcoin, and they're about to do it on Ethereum. Um, and I'm very interested in seeing how that experiment plays out, and if it's successful, it will open the door for a lot more interesting um, consensus algorithms and, and hybrid systems and interactions between blockchains and a, a great development in the state of the art and the science. So all of those things make. Ethereum interesting. I'm interested because it can move faster. I'm interested because it explores a much broader set of applications. I'm interested because <clears throat> despite its missteps, it's actually taught us a lot of very useful lessons. We're learning a lot about governance as well. Um, and there are some very tricky questions about when do you fork, when do you not fork, who do you bail out, who do you not bail out, how important is immutability. All of these things are being experimented on because of Ethereum. I also like the fact that having other robust blockchains with strong valuations, liquidity, and lots of transactions aside from Bitcoin um, makes the space healthier for everyone. Uh, when, when Bitcoin is having a bad time, it gives some people somewhere to diversify into that's not fiat. I mean, if I wanted to take my money out of uh, uh, Bitcoin, I'm not saying that's something I want to do, but at the moment, I might have two choices. I could diversify into dollars. I could have well, three choices. I could diversify into gold. And now I could also diversify into some of the other um, blockchains out there that are doing interesting things. Um, it's, it's up to every person to evaluate what's interesting to them. Next question. Matt says, other than the scaling problem, what is the most challenging obstacle for Ethereum and Bitcoin moving forward? Oh, that's, uh, that's a great question. Um, you know, I have said, I think repeatedly, that to me, the biggest problem is privacy. And the reason privacy is a very big problem is uh, that if we don't have strong enough anonymity and privacy, the most obvious attack against these systems, when they get to a size where they start threatening the existing monetary, uh, monetary control system, the, big interests of banks and things like that, is that in countries where the rule of law is pretty weak, they're going to pass laws where they're going to punish you after the fact for things you do with digital currencies. Um, ex post facto laws, vague laws, laws that are uh, that create enormous prosecutorial discretion so they can make examples of some people, um, laws where you don't know if what you're doing is, is correct or not, but the penalties are extremely harsh, things like that. And all of those depend on the ability to find you and create consequences after you've done a transaction for that uh, transaction, right? So, um, so privacy, I think, is really important. Privacy allows us to diffuse some of the legal attacks that are likely to come in the long term uh, and create a more robust network. Uh, I think that obstacle is more important than scaling, and it needs to be solved in the base layer because it can't be solved in the second layer.